Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Track 2. I have great pleasure in introducing Dominic de Kuman from Drop Solid. Dominic has been an active contributor in the Drupal, uh, Drupal community and is really excited to be contributing to Mautic by sharing knowledge on why it's important to get the most out of Mautic by combining it with other open source platforms like Drupal and you know me to create personalized experiences. So I'm really excited to hear your talk today and I will just hand over straight over to you, Dominic. Thanks, Ruth. So uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Dominique, um, and this talk is about creating personalized digital experiences with Mautic, and we'll be exploring the business value of that. So quickly about me, I started out as a software engineer, uh, more specifically in, uh, in the Drupal community, and then later on when founding uh, Drop Solid, um, I've gotten more involved in, uh, in digital marketing, so um, I'm really excited uh, to share uh, to share this knowledge uh, with you this evening. Uh, so what is this about? So it's it's about combining the CMS marketing automation and a customer data platform to deliver personalized experiences. It's about getting to know your customers uh, before you start mailing them. And it's about moving from the CMS marketing automation to, to a complete uh, digital experience. So uh, yeah, it's, it's all about uh, staying relevant and, and delivering a lot of return on experience, um, which is the return on investment of digital experiences uh, to customers. So to understand this a little bit better, uh, let's look a little bit at the, the digital roadmap most organizations uh, go through when they're when when they're starting to build their digital presence. So, in the beginning, it starts out with uh, with with a website uh, with the products and services on it. Uh, we have some uh, some social, some paid, uh, some search, and it evolves all the way up to um, yeah, getting getting more and more channels. Uh, trying to personalize, trying to automate uh, certain things, especially when we get to the optimized and the automated stages. Uh, a platform like Mautic uh, definitely uh, is, is, is the way to go. Um, and it goes all the way up to, to the vision uh, we have is to deliver an experience to every customer uniquely. Um, and as you can see, the uh, the KPIs that that the business is tracking over all these uh, over all these uh, in this digital roadmap, it goes from just traffic and and and, and getting leads into uh, all the way at the end delivering customer lifetime value. And we'll get back uh, we'll get back on that later because it's very important uh, to measure the customer lifetime value if if you're growing a business. So getting this, the customer centrally, getting to him through all these different channels in any context, physically, contextually, what kind of experience he's having at, at the moment, that's, that's what it's all about. And to understand what, um, what is the digital experience, is the digital experience platform which brings everything together uh, to create a personalized experience for the customer uh, let's look at what it uh, what it is so um, and more specifically what what it isn't so it's not just branding for a new kind of website uh, it is as a big as a change as it is from a website to a CMS system as it is from a CMS system to a, a DXP and it's all about uh, the data. So the biggest difference between the CMS and the DXP is that the focus is all about on knowing the customer. And the, the key phrases we have there is personalization, omnichannel, analytics, user experience. And we'll get to that, but if you think about this, uh, adding adding a, a platform like Modic will... will um, will definitely add to that. Um, now, if you look at this, what what is it? Uh, if you look at uh, pure the definition, it's basically a CMS system 
added with data analytics and uh, machine learning to uh, to make it to make it a lot smarter. So it's basically a, a CMS with a smart customer data platform. Now, if I would be having to explain this to a, to a business person, I would say like, look, it's kind of a, a system where you connect uh, your uh, your channels eh, or where you want to communicate to your customers with the inside of your uh, organizations where you have the information of your customer uh, and your products and, and the intelligence you have about the business. If I would be talking to a more IT-minded person, I would say it's... Uh, it's your business logic layer. You have your authentication layer. On top of that is your uh, experience layer. And if I would be talking to a marketeer, I would say it's uh, it's powering all your channels. And if your uh, your traffic you're driving to you your, through your funnel, uh, where you have all these. Uh, uh, these channels drawing in traffic, and then you're using a system like Matic to uh, to manage all the the communication. Well, it needs it needs to touch somewhere. Well, that's the uh, that's the DXP. So, how does all this knowing this? How does this fit in with uh, with marketing automation, and how does this fit in with uh, with Matic? So. Basically, what we want to achieve is we want to personalize all our digital channels. So sending messages with, uh, with Mautic, well, we want to, it's a channel as well. We want to personalize this ex as well. So when we're uh, capturing all that behavior from that user and capturing that data from, uh, from the customer online, we want to build these customer profiles and although we, we build customer profiles in Matic as well, the user has to fill in uh, his data. And okay, we know on, on which pages the, uh, the user has been, uh, has been surfing, but we don't really track what the behavior of the customer is on the website. Like we, we are not tracking uh, what kind of content is around, uh, what is the, what, what exactly on the page is he engaging with? Uh, and we're also not comparing this with uh, other um, persons who have gone through the same uh, customer journey. So in order to personalize all these, um, yeah, based on this behavior, well, what we need to know is we, we need to know even more from that customer. So. What we want to do is we want to get the, the data from uh, the engagement, not only in the emails, but also on the website and the, the engagement with the content on the website. And this will allow us to, to create uh, an even better uh, feedback loop where we can discover uh, the intent of a customer and use that in our marketing automation in order to drive up the, the time on site and, and the click-through rate and um, yeah, the conversion rate of, uh, of everything what we have uh, going on. So in, in order to do that, how, how does that work? Um, so first thing is we need to have uh, insight in our visitors. So we need to capture all that data and then we need to build segments. Once we have these segments, we can use these segments across our channels. And then as a last step, we, we get to the insight of uh, our campaigns per segments and we enhance this. So, and all this is, is happening uh, with uh, first party cookies. Uh, so of, obviously a customer has to give the consent to, uh, to, for us to capture his data. Um, if you look at that more closely, how does that work to go from a CMS and a marketing automation to DXP and use all that data? So the first step would be if obviously uh, deploy our uh, CMS, and get the touch points there, define the customer segments, write relevant content across the journey, 
then we would be setting up a, a CDP, like for example, you know me, which is an open source uh, CDP to capture all the data from these different sources. And uh, we would be also, if, if we can do that, we can collect data from uh, other sources, like for example, we could be using data from CRM systems, from other data management platforms, and we can also feed in uh, the data Mautic has been capturing and use our uh, our rules and uh, even machine learning algorithms to find these, uh, these patterns, these segments that are valuable for us. And we can then send them back and use them in our uh, web CMS and in our uh, mobile apps and back again in our uh, emails. So the third step would then uh, be building these uh, these segments. Uh, so building these segments, you could do that manual manually based on all the capturing that you have been done uh, around your customer, or you can you can you can do that uh, using machine learning algorithms who can help you classify these uh, these segments automatically. Yeah, you can. Give uh, give it data and make make it make it segment uh, on four char characteristics, for example, using word clouds. Um, there's all sorts of algorithms that you can run on that data in uh, in a CDP. Um, now, once we have these segments, we can uh, then start to use them, for example, in our in our uh, CMS system where we would say like, okay, uh, this block or this paragraph, we only want to show that for this uh, customer segment that we have been detecting. Um, and this way you can, you can craft uh, specific journeys for specific users. And uh, we can also get, uh, get the same data from the CDP into uh, Mautic. This, so for example, what I'm showing here is the, um, the con a, a contact that we have. And um, we add this data from the CDP, the segment that this person has been uh, classified into. So in our example, he's been uh, recognized as someone who's uh, applying for a, for a job. Uh, so we could start using that segment that the AI has detected in the pattern that a certain user is following through the website, and we can start using this in our uh, Mautic platform. Now, the last thing is to uh, to try and see how we can improve the experience. So that's the last part where we will be sending the um, the segmentation to a custom dimension in Google Analytics. So Google Analytics will then be um, able to segment the data it already has. So for example, if you have set up your, uh, your Go conversions uh, and you would be sending the same segment to Google Analytics, it would be able to say, uh, um, we have uh, X amount of uh, applicants, for example, uh, we had that much uh, goal conversions. You would even be able to, if you did a personalization effort, you could be able to compare the previous month with the next month. Thus, you could be uh, seeing how um, how your efforts are are paying up, paying off, uh, and then you can define new segments, uh, adjust existing segments, uh, etc. Same can be done in uh, in email campaigns. Also, this is everything that comes from the emails. It can be segmented, and you can track these uh, these results. Now, to bring this all together, uh, let me show you a, a little a quick demo. Um, where it all comes together. The Drop Solid Experience Cloud enables you to optimize the customer experience, resulting in higher conversion rates and better customer satisfaction. Let's have a look at how this works. We have our anonymous surfer searching in Google for flower piece. There we go. Well, look at that. The first result she gets is Florista, a website with a fully integrated Drop Solid Experience Cloud. Our still anonymous visitor is browsing the homepage. She's scanning through the themes of the new collection, 
looking at the featured products and taking a closer look at the upcoming workshops. While she's doing all that, the personalization AI is using his magic. By using machine learning, the AI identifies different segments of visitors and tries to fit our visitor in one of those segments. On the Florista website, there are three specific segments. There's the B2B prospect, the online shopper, and the explorer. He or she is now looking at the latest inspiration from the blog and is showing an interest in the first article. There's a great step-by-step -step guide on how to make your own flower arrangements. And there we go. The AI has identified this visitor as an explorer. That's how long it takes. Our explorer gets to the end of the blog article and fills in a form to receive a free download. Great! Now our explorer has a name and we even have her mailing address and consent to start sending newsletters. Our anonymous visitor isn't that anonymous anymore. Let's have a look at what information we've received. So, her name is Sophia. Sophia Mertens. Her email address is sophia.mertens at gmail.com. And we know that she's an explorer. We even know what she looks like from the picture connected to her Google account. The log shows when she first visited the website and what actions she has performed. And now, the fun part. Let's put that information to good use. The next time Sophia visits the Florista website, the homepage looks slightly different. We know she's an explorer, not an online shopper or business, so the content has changed to reflect that. The subscription form for the workshops has been put at the top of the page, just the way Sophia likes it. As an explorer, she's eager to learn and get creative herself. She's not looking to buy a flower piece, not at this point at least. How great would it be if Sophia also received newsletters tailored to her needs? Oh, there's a new email. Let's see what's in it. Wow, workshops, tutorials, DIY packages, exactly what she was looking for. Now that's a great user experience. All right, so what we've been seeing is, uh, is Sophia, who's, uh, yeah, who's, who has received a personalized experience both on the CMS and uh, on, on the marketing automation side. And this has a uh, yeah. This has been very beneficial to her because she immediately received the idea that okay, this this organization gets who I am, and gives me the right um, the right information at the right time. Um, if we look at the the journey more closely, yeah, the journey could be starting at uh, on an ad. Uh, she could be activated as we saw in the video. Uh, she got to the conversion, and we uh, okay. We we got a, an an email where where she could download this, um, and then we could start nurturing her, um, start personalizing the website, start personalizing uh, the emails. You get the idea. If if we can use the segment because of the behavior she exhibited in the first place when she was on our website, we discovered this and we use this across our channels. This has um, this has made it that uh, the Sophia had a really great experience. And uh, this is one explorer, but you could have it for an online shopper, for someone who is a, a B2B provider. This business can have different segments. If we can um, detect who these segments are, we can deliver them a personalized experience. It will uh, it will make it a great experience for them. So, and that's what it's all about. If we if we really want to uh, get it to the next level level, then we start using this uh, this data and we start building data driven campaigns. Um, and the more data we have about our our uh, customer, uh, the better. And capturing this data is is, is totally possible uh, with open, even with open source uh, tooling. And yeah, if you can run the machine learning on top of it, then we can get uh, get to to these patterns automatically. Now the technology behind this, what you have seen, uh, is uh, is Drupal, Mautic, and Unomi. So it's three open source platforms: CMS, CDP. 
and a marketing automation platform. And it, it works like this. Uh, so the customer goes on all these channels. The CMS is delivering the, the experience. We're capturing all that data. It's getting into the Unomi customer data management platform. If someone is clicking on the emails, we'll be captured in Emotic. This data will also be used. And then in the end, we'll get uh, we'll get to the Google Analytics uh, stage where we have uh, the, the business intelligence and we can follow up how all this is uh, performing. So if we have all these systems in, in place, we can start delivering a, a better digital experience. And that's what the DXP is all about. Now, in an open source community, obviously there's a way to become a part of this. Um, Drop Solid has been uh, giving a lot back to the Drupal community uh, with um, the the uh, the rocket ship distribution, uh, which allows you to quickly set up uh, the basis for a uh, DXP, uh, the Apache Unomi uh, module that we've been contributing, also the Matic paragraph, which allows you to use uh, Matic easy with Drupal, uh, and if you want to be involved. I, I invite you to uh, check uh, on Drupal.org our CTO's uh, profile, Nick Finov, and contact him if you if you want to uh, contribute on this. Now, finally, um, why would you invest in experience? Eh? So, what's the what's the business impact of uh, of all this? So, why would anyone uh, bother to uh, uh, to to invest in this? So. To understand this better, I got some uh, some data from the analyst firms like uh, like Gartner. And the first uh, thing I want to show you is investments in customer experience. So this is an, uh, a study where uh, companies were uh, investigated on how their customer experience projects, what happened to their business when they were investing in uh, customer experience projects and how they were seeing return on investment. And a staggering 93% is was measuring ROI. And what we see is, so it's not only in loyalty and increased revenue and lifetime value, which is really obvious, but it's also in reduced cost of service. Imagine customers being served more personalized based on their behavior. And we can figure out all these things uh, up front. Imagine... Uh, how many telephone calls there haven't to be made uh, so how much that 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 could uh, save your business um, it even has a positive impact on your brand value because yeah your brand is recognized as uh, a great experience um, if you look at this is some data from a typically done a research study on SaaS companies, there even promoters uh, would churn 40% less and bring in 40% more qualified leads. Um, so yeah, even there, because there's di digital businesses, the impact is even more dramatic. If we look at a more uh, macroeconomic uh, research piece, I think this one is uh, is really interesting. Uh, I hope they will update it for uh, for 2020. I'm really curious to see uh, how it how it played out after a year like this. Uh, but anyway, and when you had invested in two thousand a hundred dollars in uh, the standard market, you would be having one hundred and fifty seven dollars. But if you would be investing in companies specifically targeting customer experience. Uh, you would be ending up with $760. And obviously, in these statistics, uh, you would have like companies like uh, Google and, uh, and Amazon, uh, uh, etc., who are investing heavily in digital customer experience. So, um, yeah, you can see how the value of, of these uh, customer experience focused companies is, uh, is evolving. And then, if you look at uh, like Summarizing this return on experience, uh, what, what is it? Um, if you look at uh, things like digital uh, personalization, uh, and we look at uh, the more uh, proprietary systems, 
uh, they can you can see that they already put on really nice results and uh, more times on, on site uh, also in uh, open rate higher open rate of emails which uh, which means that um, the effect of the uh, marketing automation system has been has been increased and yeah we, we look we also look at uh, better service uh, in in the last case uh, we see the, that call reduction uh, 30 percent overall call reduction so yeah if your business is kind of sizable even even for uh, smaller businesses uh, this, the, the win can be uh, can can be huge uh if we look at e-commerce uh, obviously that that if you can um add this to your e-commerce you would be having greater conversion rates uh, more uh, more revenue uh your costs would decrease uh, and and you would have uh, less cart abandonment and these are the cases put down by by yeah by proprietary platforms it be really great to see to uh, uh, and and yeah, we, we've been working on on that as well uh, delivering Matic to uh, to our customers we, we we really look forward to putting down the same results with uh, with Matic as well um, so uh, yeah good uh, good times ahead um, summarized you could put it in uh, in three buckets. Uh, one would be customer lifetime value so that would be being the time the customer stays at your business and spends at your business and the overall value that had uh, so the better the customer experience the better the customer lifetime value but because the customer will stay longer at your brand and he will spend uh, more uh, and more often if you look at customer acquisition costs, uh, so that's the the cost that's needed to acquire a customer, uh, that would be going down because of uh, personalized experiences. Um, why is that? Because if your ads are running everywhere and you can immediately figure out what the intention of a customer is and segment him and deliver them, him the, the right content, uh, all your advertising, all your marketing costs, all your sales costs, uh, they would be far, uh, far more effective. So your cost of acquiring a new customer would go down. And then the last one, that's the uh, uh, the costs, uh, the operational costs. So the cost that you you would, the marginal cost, the cost you would be spending to make one extra uh, customer using this digital personalization, you would be uh, making your business a lot more scalable. Hey, imagine not having to email customers or picking up the phone, but the the system can take over more and more of these uh, of these tasks. Hey, it would not matter if you have a thousand customers or a million customers. So it would also have an effect on uh, on this. And this brings us to uh, to our conclusion. Um, which brings me back to the beginning. So this webinar was about combining CMS, marketing automation, and data, customer data, with a customer data platform to deliver a personalized experience. And yeah, this would allow you to get your customers, uh, to know your customers very well before you start emailing them, increasing your, uh, your return on experience. And by moving from CMS marketing automation to this more data-driven approach, you would be able to uh, to deliver a, 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 a better uh, return on experience. So, if you have any questions about uh, the session, I'm uh, I'm happy uh, to to answer them. Fantastic. Thank you, Dominic. That was a really great session. We've had a question come in, so let me just share my screen and we can look at that question together. So what is the main benefit of using you know me over storing user data segments in Mautic? Yeah, so uh, the you know me seg uh, the you know me uh, platform it's a, it's a customer data platform so you would be able to use this so it's a, basically a, a big database 
uh, you would be able to store all these uh, different sources together and you it would be really easy for you to run machine algorithms on top of it to uh, to segment that data so um, it's also capable of while in Matic we would be storing uh, the URL and the page the person clicked on etc but then you know me would also be storing uh, which browser uh, he, is, he is using and which content was around this. We would even get to the meta text. If you would be enabling the RDF framework in Drupal, we would also be capturing that information. Um, yeah, it's, it's far more usable to store lots, lots of data on the customer profile and to make it scalable. Yeah, it sounds like it's a case of like using the right tool for the right thing, yeah, isn't it? Like marketing automation is what Vortex does, but when you start getting into more depth about the customer profile and the more information, like actually better, that you're better to move to a tool that's custom built to do that and then integrate that well with Vortex, like you were explaining. Exactly. Yeah. So I have a question. So, um, Say I have a business and I've got a customer that is already doing a little bit of, of marketing automation, but maybe not kind of taking it all that seriously. How do you go about convincing that customer to start investing in personalized marketing automation? What, what would be your kind of like steps that you would take that customer through? Yeah, so I think then it's uh, it's really important to, to show the customer uh, the return on investment. Um, so and and to I we would just ha be having a, a, a website and you would have to convince them to start uh, something like uh, like Matic and then even in combination with a customer data platform I, the the fastest way to do that is to to set it up and start using it in uh, inside the customer CMS to do like a, a proof of concept and show them in a couple of weeks that their conversion rates are uh, increasing because you are personalizing their emails and are personalizing uh, their website. And then I think yeah. that will, uh, the, the, the data will do, uh, will do the convincing then. So it's kind of a case of starting with really small examples where you can show them that it that look this works and then gradually building on that i guess and that also helps them get used to how that fits in their business doesn't it as well i think and how think a bit more broadly about how they can use uh, automated personalization as well exactly i think it's it's like that's why these open source platforms are really great because you can set them up and then in, implement a, a couple of use cases with your customer and mm -hmm. get get to a couple of successes and then start building many more use cases because it's not because you have the tool that your business will start growing you have to really work with uh, with, with the tools um, and it's getting the customer over the line to just try it and then really expand in it yeah, yeah, the proof is in the pudding, as we say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's another question here from Ludo. And how does you know me merge users over several channel channels? Does it have a user ID? Yes, it it has a it has a user ID. So it has a, a universal uh, user ID and that's what it's using to to merge uh, these uh, these channels. I have to say I'm not into the technical depth, if you know, want to really know more about this, uh, talk to our CTO, Nick Feenhoff. Uh, he will uh, he will explain you in depth how it all works and with the machine learning and everything. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, and you folks have a booth, don't you? So if people want to know more, they could just drop by the Drop Solid booth and have a talk to your team there, can't they? Yeah, 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 exactly. Or they can subscribe on the website and then we'll, 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 uh, we'll chat later. That's also possible. It's not quite as fun as meeting up in the bar afterwards, though, is it, for a chat? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I really miss it. Uh, also, DrupalCon, also the same. Yeah, it's, uh, but yeah. Yeah, that's, life, it is hey, what that's it how is. we find it. 
Great. Okay. So I don't think we have any more questions unless anything comes in right as we're just saying that. That's usually the case for me. Um, so I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time, Dominic, to share your knowledge and share your thoughts on this. I think it's really interesting bringing together different open source tools and it makes for such a powerful um, set of tools to put in the hands of businesses nowadays that previously just wasn't available. So yeah, very exciting times ahead. And thank you so much for bringing that to the Maltic community and explaining how that works and how you do that at Dropsolid. It's been really great. All right. Thank you. I hope that was helpful. And uh, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to the next time already. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so do catch up with Dominic in the Dropsolid booth after this if you can. Um, otherwise, thank you very much and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.